Well, welcome back to the homestead. I've had a lot of uh, people posting on my channel asking if I was okay and am I still working on the house, where's all the videos and, and whatnot because I haven't uploaded a video in probably close to two months, maybe a little more. And I just thought I'd take a few minutes to go ahead and post something up, let everybody know where I'm at and what's going on. So we are still working on getting the house built, but I haven't really been working on the house itself. Uh, I've, I've got my in-laws that we live right next to right now and they have a house in town with some property and the state's been trying to acquire some of their property for a road project and they finally got all that paperwork finalized and they're ready to buy a house and move out here and before I can let them sign anything on a on a house to get moved out here I need to make sure that they can actually get electricity because I currently don't have electricity on my property. So I started talking to the neighbors and I had talked to Energy back in 2016 and cleared a, a, a plan for the electrical to run through. They knew where to come off of the power lines, where I wanted it ran, run, and everything was good. So what we did, I set that to the side and I started working on building my house. and. Now that my in-laws are ready to go ahead and start moving out here, I'm going to go ahead and start getting the, the power line installed. But if I don't wait until they have a well, septic, or foundation down, I don't get an 800 foot credit for their house being here. And I really need that 800 foot credit because the, the length of the run for the power line is going to be close to 3,000 feet. And if I can get 800 for my house and 800 for their house, that's 1,600 feet. And that cuts my cost for getting electricity to the place in half. So I've been holding off on that, and that's why I've built the whole house with a little Honda inverter. And uh, but now that they're ready to come out, it's time to go ahead and get the electrical stuff put in. So I contacted the two neighbors across the street where I needed to come up between their house, and they were okay with it. There were just a couple of trees on their place. Most of them were small. Uh, wasn't going to be a big deal. And then I had to come across one neighbor on my side of the road, uh, which hasn't built on, on their land yet, but you would figure they'd want electricity when they do. So the only two trees that had to be cut on their place, I didn't think was going to be a big deal either. However, I, I was quite wrong about that. So what happened, uh, when I bought this land, I bought it at a land auction from Weyerhaeuser, which is a paper company basically, or a timber company. And uh, they had 160 acres that they divided up into about seven lots. I bought one, another person bought one, and we both built on them. And then a doctor came in and bought everything else. And while I thought they were buying that to turn around and flip as an investment property, and we're still gonna have it developed as residential, when I contacted the doctor to get the right of way for the power line, I was informed that what they were really doing was donating that to a college foundation. I don't know the name of the college and I don't know what the foundation is, nor do I know what they intend to do with the land. But the paperwork's already started on that and the doctor can't give me the right of way because of that. And the paperwork's not gonna be finalized until somewhere around the end of the year and I don't have that long to wait. So we had to start looking for an alternate plan to get power to the, to the land. And thankfully, uh, just behind the two neighbors across the street is a fourth neighbor, and they have a piece of L-shaped property, and one leg of that comes out uh, directly across from my property, and it's an exact 30-foot wide piece of property which is the same amount that I have to have for uh, power line right away. I contacted them and told them what my predicament was and they were like, sure, go ahead and come on. Uh, we, we don't mind if you cut the trees, you know, get your power put in, it's not a problem at all. They have been absolutely phenomenal and uh, the only drawback is there's about 50 trees that have to be cut. So that's where I've been lately is trying to cut the trees off of their property and get them cleaned up and hauled off or burned or whatever has to happen to them. And uh, 
I'm not quite done with that. I'm, I've got, I think, about 10 trees left that I've got to, to get taken care of. So hopefully by this Saturday, I will have the, the right-of-way cleared for the electrical lines, and I can go ahead and have uh, Entergy start doing the groundwork for running electrical onto our place. Whenever they do that, I'll try and record uh, them setting the poles and pulling the power lines and stuff like that. And uh, we'll see if, if we can get a, a decent video out of all that. So I've been working on the right of way there. And then also where my in-laws are going to put their home, there's some dirt work, there's a well and septic that has to be done. I'm working with contractors to try and get all that stuff arranged. So I haven't been doing a lot of work on my property. But one of the things I am working on doing is I'm trying to get my septic tank done by the same contractor that my in-laws are using. So uh, this week I've got somebody coming out to do a perk test and design the system and then I can get my certification for the septic and I can go ahead and have that put down while they're already on the place doing my in-laws. And that'll save us a little bit of money off of both bills because they don't have to deliver equipment twice to do the same type of work. So, Whenever they go to put my septic down, I'll also try and get that filmed and uh, share that with y'all. But as far as work inside the house, there really hasn't been that much. Now, I did work without doing using the camera. I didn't film all of it, but I did go through and do a bunch of uh, little minor things like just getting nail plates over electrical wires and uh, spray foam in a few holes here and there that the uh, insulation wasn't covering. And <coughs> things like that, just to get the house 100% ready for drywall to come in. I did that and then I went and I got estimates on the drywall and I found a contractor that I'm wanting to use and I've gotten the price on it and it's gonna be about $10,000 to do uh, all the drywall and then have it uh, floated and sanded and prepped ready for paint. So I'm just waiting to pull the trigger on that uh, for probably another week or two while I'm getting this other stuff out of the way because I don't want too many irons in the fire at one time and then once I've got some of this other stuff kind of under control we'll go ahead and get the contractors in here for the drywall and again I'll try and share that with you so uh, the only thing I've really got that's of interest to the house is uh, I've, I've been concerned about how the house is performing the the energy efficiency of the house versus the air conditioning estimate that I got and to me the house just seems like it may not really need a four ton air conditioner which is the estimate that I got so what I decided to do was go out and buy a few little cheap thermometers and I've placed one outside uh, under the porch by one of my columns I've got one in the center of the house downstairs, one in the center of the house upstairs, and then one in the center of the house at the peak of the attic. And I'm trying to record the maximum temperatures for odd and end days throughout the summer. Whenever I'm out in the evening, I want to record what the maximum temperature for that day was. And I thought maybe with those numbers, I could turn that into the air conditioning people and let them assess whether or not they think I really need a four ton unit or maybe we could go down to a three or a three and a half ton. So uh, I've started doing that and I've only got four days of data, but I find it really interesting uh, the, the numbers that I've got. And let me, let me share that with you. All right, so before I share the numbers with you, uh, I want to tell you what I did, what I found online. So I went out online and I searched for average attic temperatures. And down here in the south, the, the way your average attic is built is at your ceiling, you'll have a, above the ceiling in the attic, you'll have a, a layer of insulation. And then everything above that is unconditioned space. So the attic in the unconditioned space, uh, they usually try and vent that heat out through gable vents in the, in the ends of the house. They'll put uh, turbines or whirly birds uh, in the roof of the house. And then along the, the peak of the roof, they'll put a, a ridge vent. And that's all designed to move cool air in and hot air out of the, of the attic. And <clears throat> with all of those things implemented, they say the average temperature of an uh, attic here in the south on like a 95 to 97 degree day 
your attic will reach temperatures of about 150 to 160 degrees. So that attic is, is really accumulating the heat and it's far hotter in the attic than what it is outside by about 60 degrees. So with that in mind, uh, for the four days of data that I have so far, I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. And uh, on July 27th, the maximum outdoor temperature was 96 degrees. The maximum downstairs temperature, like in my living room, was 88 degrees in the house. Now that's with the house completely closed up, no windows open, no doors open, no curtains, uh, no fans running, no air conditioning running or anything else. It's just a completely sealed up house for the entire day. So the maximum outdoor temperature was 96. The maximum downstairs temperature was 88. So that's a difference of about eight degrees. The, the, the living room stayed eight degrees cooler than the maximum outdoor temperature. The upstairs maximum temperature was 92, so that was four degrees cooler than the maximum outdoor temperature. And the maximum temperature in my attic, at the peak of my attic in the center of the house, was 96 degrees. Exactly the same temperature as the maximum outdoor temperature under my porch. On 629, the outdoor maximum was 98 degrees and my downstairs living room maximum was 85. So that's uh, 13 degrees difference. My, my living room was 13 degrees cooler than the maximum outdoor temperature. The maximum upstairs temperature was 89. So that was uh, nine degrees cooler than the maximum outdoor temperature. And then the attic, at the peak of the attic in the center of the house, the maximum temperature was 98. The exact same temperature as outside. On 630, uh, the maximum outdoor temperature was 94 degrees, and the maximum downstairs temperature in the living room was 84. The living room was 10 degrees cooler. The upstairs maximum was 86, which is 8 degree cooler than the outside temperature, and the attic was again 94 degrees, an exact match of the outdoor temperature. And today, July 1st, the outdoor temperature was 98 degrees. My living room temperature downstairs was 83 degrees. So that's um, what about 15 degrees separation. The upstairs temperature was 88. So the upstairs was 10 degrees cooler than outside. And the attic temperature was 98, an exact match of outside. So based on these numbers and comparing that to what I'm finding online, your average house, your attic would be 60 degrees warmer than the outside temperature for the maximum outside temperature of that day. And my attic is the exact same temperature as the maximum outdoor temperature, which means my attic with no conditioning, no venting or anything else in it is 60 degrees cooler than the average conventional built attic. Now I had a lot of uh, feedback when I was uh, designing and building the roof and people telling me that's not the way it's done, that's not the code, that's, that's just wrong. That's not how it's done. And this is one of the reasons that I I'm, I'm feel fortunate that I'm in an area where I don't have a building inspector. Because when you have ideas that are different than the norm, it doesn't make them wrong. Uh, it just means it's, it's not the standard way of doing it. But I'm completely happy with the way that my roof is performing. Uh, it's not leaking. It's not transferring heat into the house. And my attic temperatures prove it. They are 60 degrees cooler than the average conventional built attic. So if I had not put the air gap in my attic, or if I had not put an air gap between the tin and the roof decking, and I had not done a sealed attic where the insulation is on the bottom of the roof decking, preventing all of the heat from transferring into the house, my attic would have been 160 degrees on these days. But because I did something different than the norm, I have a better performing house. And that's going to transfer into lower utility bills is, is my hope. 
And I believe whenever I share these numbers, after I get a sufficient amount of them, I think when I share these numbers with the air conditioning company, they're going to see also that the standard unit that they estimated for a 25 square, 2,500 square foot house for this house is really too large. And I think we'll probably wind up scaling that down some uh, so that we get the proper amount of runtime on it. So anyway, uh, like I said, I'm not totally against building codes. I think it's good that you have a minimum standard. I, I do have issues with the fact that a lot of people feel like a building code is the law and that is the only way that you can do something. It has to be done that way. Sometimes when you think outside of the box, you come up with a different way of doing something and you get a better result. So I, I appreciate not having the red tape that ties my hands and prevents me from trying things that I think may benefit me. Now, the flip side of that is if I tried it and it didn't work, well, that's on me. I've, I've got to pay to, to change it. But in this case, the plans that I had, the ideas that I put together, they appear to be working really well. And I think I'm gonna have a, a nice, well-performing house for many, many years to come. So anyway, that's enough rambling and ranting for today. And uh, hopefully I'll have some of these projects that I can film some actual work being done pretty soon. And uh, as soon as I have that, then I'll be happy to share it with you. So until then, y'all keep checking back.